Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. In this short podcast we are going to look at some simple ideas for recording transactions. We call this double entry bookkeeping. The start of double entry bookkeeping has been dated back to the time when it was realized that every transaction had two effects on a business. For every transaction there is a debit to one or more accounts and a credit to one or more accounts. At all times the total of the debits must equal the total of the credits. Here is how our system works. The accounting equation tells us that assets are equal equal to liabilities plus equity. Asset accounts usually have a debit balance. To increase an asset account we debit the account. To decrease an asset account we credit the account. Liabilities accounts will usually have a credit balance. To increase a liability account, we credit the account. To decrease a liability account, we debit the account. There are different groups of accounts under equity. The capital account is increased by a credit to the account. It is decreased by a debit to the account. To increase a revenue account, we credit the account and to decrease a revenue account, we debit the account. Expense accounts usually have a debit balance, so to increase an expense account, we debit the account. To decrease an expense, we credit the account. Finally, dividend accounts will usually have a debit balance. To increase a dividend account, we debit the account. To decrease a dividend account, we credit the account. To recap, asset accounts have a normal balance of a debit, liability accounts have a normal balance of a credit, equity accounts have a normal balance of a credit. To increase an account we do the same as the normal balance of the account. In other words, we increase the normal balance. To decrease an account we do the opposite of its normal balance. Let us return to the five transactions that we met in our first podcast. The first step with transactions is to analyze them to see which accounts are being used and whether the entry should be a debit or credit for that account. Here are our five transactions again. In our first transaction, the owners put £50,000 in the bank. So the amount that will be entered to the accounts will be £50,000. If the money is deposited to the bank, then we shall debit an asset account, the cash account. This increases the asset of cash. We shall then credit the capital account, which is an equity account. This increases the equity account for capital. The second transaction was to purchase £4,000 of equipment through a bank loan. The amount that is to be entered to the accounts is £4,000. We shall debit the asset account of equipment. This increases the asset of equipment. And then credit the liability account for the bank loan. This increases the liability of bank loan. Our third transaction was to purchase 600 units of inventories at £10 per unit, the purchase being a credit purchase. The amount is 600 times 10, which is £6,000. We shall debit the asset account of inventories. The units represent inventory which we are hoping to sell and are an asset until sold. We are increasing the asset of inventories. We still owe the money for the units, so we shall credit the liability account of trade payables. This increases the liability account of trade payables. Now we are able to sell some of the units. We sell 400 of the units at £15 each on credit. The amount by which our inventories have been reduced will be 400 times 10, which is £4,000. This will reduce the asset of inventories. 
we are going to debit the account for cost of sales. This increases the account for cost of sales. And we shall credit the asset account of inventories to reduce the balance. Now consider the amount we sold. We received 400 times 15, which is £6,000 for the sale. We debit the asset account of trade receivables to record the money we expect to receive. We credit the revenue account of sales. Finally, we pay £500 for rent with a cheque. So the amount involved will be £500. We shall debit the expense account for rent. This increases the expense of rent. And credit the cash account, since cash has been reduced by £500. This decreases the asset of cash. We have now analysed all of our transactions and we are ready to record these to the accounts. In former times these entries would be made to ledgers, books that recorded transactions in each account. Today most businesses will use a computerised system, but the entries being made to the accounts are still the same. Each account entry will record five details. The date of the account, the other account in the transaction, the amount as a debit or a credit, and the balance of the account after the entry has been made. At the top I have shown the transaction. Underneath I have shown the page on the ledger. At the bottom I have shown my entries, except that I am not going to enter all the page details in this podcast. We have a deposit of £50,000 and the balance on the account is now £50,000. The other account involved is the capital account. Again, here is the page before the entry to the capital account and the page after the entry has been made. Our second transaction was the purchase of equipment for the business using a bank loan. I have shown the entry here that will be made to the asset account of equipment and the entry that would be made to the liability account of bank loan. Our third transaction was to purchase 600 units of inventories. The entry to the asset account of inventories is shown and the corresponding entry to trade payables. We then sold 400 units. First the entry to the asset account of inventories. We use a separate line for each entry. Note that in the last column we have recalculated and entered the new balance of £2,000. Now the corresponding entry for cost of sales to show a new balance of £4,000. We record the amount that we expect to receive from the credit sale in trade receivables and the revenue from the sale as a credit in the sales account. Finally, the payment of rent. We debit the expense account for rent with £500 and credit the cash account. This is the second entry, so we must recalculate and record the new balance. Double entry ensures there are details for each transaction that can be referenced easily. It also provides a checking mechanism to see that entries have been made correctly. Although computerized systems are used widely, an accountant will still need to have a full knowledge of debits and credits to check that the entries were made correctly. Here is the first simple check that is made. Each account is listed together with its current balance. It follows that if the debits and credits for each transaction should balance, the total debits and credits should balance. So if we take the sum of all the debit balances, that balance will equal the sum of all the credit balances. At the end of each accounting period, which should at least be monthly, the trial balance is produced. 
The information on the trial balance becomes the starting point for the preparation of the financial statements for the business. It is still possible to have errors in a trial balance, and these will be discussed in another podcast. This ends our podcast on double entry in the trial balance.